So what these people are being killed for is because they happen to believe Revelation and the prophecy about the end times. They believe what Revelation is saying. They believe that Jesus is coming back. They believe that the harlot will be destroyed. They believe that, that the beast will be destroyed when he comes. These are people, and we're talking hundreds of millions of people, what's going to cause them to all of a sudden believe that the book of Revelation is true? That the end times are going to play out the way God says in his word. So I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but the world is becoming more and more non-Christian and unchristian and anti-Christian in their views toward, you know, believers, the Bible, you know, conservative uh, people in general. This is going to gain momentum. And God has told us ahead of time in the book of Revelation that the world system, this present world system that's been in operation for since the time of Babel, this mystery Babylon harlot system is going to persecute and actually set up a period of time where believers are killed. This is going to be after the first rapture, but once you know, we're gone once believers, kings and priests are taken in that rapture and appear in heaven as the 24 elders before God's throne. After that happens, there's going to be this huge, gigantic anti-Christian sentiment and people are going to be incited to come against uh, Christians. And that is going to culminate in a 10-day bloodbath of believers where thousands and millions of believers are going to be killed. And they're the ones that then appear in the book of Revelation in chapter 7 as that great multitude that stands before the throne. It's a number so big nobody can count it. And uh, we know that John can get up to 200 million. So it's, it's probably more than 200 million people are going to be saved. It's going to be a gigantic revival and a gigantic bloodbath of, of believers, of Christians. Why is the harlot going to want to target and kill Christians? Well, we know that she's got her own thing going and that basically... All the people who are in charge of this resetting of everything, um, and these are harlot people, by the way. It's not part of the beast thing. They're, they're doing uh, out in the open now what they've kind of been doing for centuries behind the scenes. But they are actively promoting an anti-Christian, anti-Christ worldview. Anti-Christ in the sense of anti-Jesus worldview. And already in Europe, here in the United States, other countries... Atheism or anti-Christian sentiment is actually what's in vogue. And it's not stylish or considered, um, you know, woke to believe in God, to believe in the Bible, to believe the Bible's true, to believe in, you know, literal um, fulfillment of what we see in scriptures. And this is going to escalate. One of the things that I uh, want to point out as just a Bible study technique for all of you who are interested in Bible study. Whenever you find a word that repeats over and over again and seems to be a theme in scripture or th seems to be a theme in a particular book, that's a word you need to pay attention to because it's a significant part of whatever that passage is talking about. And you need to use the definition that's provided for you. For example, in the book of Revelation, the word testimony or testify is used over and over and over again. And it comes from the same root word that the word martyr comes from. It's a word that means to witness or to bear testimony to something. And it's used many, many, many times in the book of Revelation. And I'm going to go over some of them here. But also, uh, John, who recorded the book of Revelation, also wrote a gospel, and he used the word testify 33 times in the gospel of John, the word testimony 14 times in his gospel. This idea of being a witness or testifying to a body of testimony 
is a theme not only in the book of John, the Gospel of John, but also in the book of Revelation. So the question here is, why does the harlot target and kill Christians? What is the specific reason? What is the charge that's against them? We're just going to look at some passages here, and, and then we're going to sort of tie them all together. So Revelation 12, 11 talks about the martyrs of the harlot. Okay, remember, the martyrs of the harlot are killed before the reign of the beast begins. She has her own group of martyrs, and then after the reign of the beast begins, he will kill Christians who don't uh, side with him or agree with him, uh, and he'll behead them. The beast is never said to be drunk with the blood of the saints. The harlot is. She will kill many Christians, and Matthew 24 talks about all the people who are going to die because their friends and neighbors and even fellow Christians turn them in. Uh, Revelation 12, 11, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to death. The martyrs of the harlot overcame Satan, okay, the dragon, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Revelation 6, 9, And when he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who'd been slain for the word of God and for the testimony they held. Revelation 17, 11, And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the witnesses, and the same root word that's for testimony, it's the witnesses, the witnesses of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered greatly. So what is the testimony that they were being killed for? They're killed for the word of their testimony. And they're slain for the word of God and for the testimony. So what is the testimony that they held? They're, they're saying something, they're believing something that is going to carry the death sentence. Or it's going to be used to incite other people to kill them. Revelation 19.10. So this is uh, talking about the angel that John fell at his feet and worshipped. Uh, See that you do not do that. That is, John, don't worship me. I am your fellow servant and of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And Revelation 1, 1 through 3. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants the things that must soon take place. And he made it known by sending his angel to his servant, John, who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ. What is the testimony of Jesus Christ? What is the testimony of Jesus? It's the spirit of prophecy. Now, we could just say that the testimony is the spirit of all prophecy, and that would, that would be true. But in Revelation, the testimony is the book of Revelation. It's the prophecy contained in Revelation. Primarily, the book of Revelation is a prophecy about the end times. So what these people are being killed for is because they happen to believe Revelation and the prophecy about the end times. They believe what Revelation is saying. They believe that Jesus is coming back. They believe that the harlot will be destroyed. They believe that, that the beast will be destroyed when he comes. These are people who believe what Jesus said in the testimony of Jesus in the book of Revelation. What is it that's going to cause all these people, and we're talking hundreds of millions of people, what's going to cause them to all of a sudden believe that the book of Revelation is true? That the end times are going to play out the way God says in his word. We're going to get to that in just a minute. Okay, I want to just read a couple more passages about the testimony and about the harlot. Revelation 17, 6, And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood... Of the witnesses, that is, those who testify of Jesus. Revelation 2.10 Do not fear what you are about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, so that you will be tested, and you will have tribulation for ten days. Be faithful unto death. Okay, and this is where that whole idea of ten days of tribulation come in. And remember, the book of Revelation, numbers can be used symbolically as in 24 elders, 
the seven horns on seven eyes on the lamb, uh, seven heads on the beast, the 144,000, that's a, also a symbolic number. But anytime you see time, 1,260 days, 42 months, three and a half days, five months, time is literal. The sixth trumpet, a single hour, day, month, and year that the harlot Mystery Babylon is destroyed by fire, smoke, and sulfur. One hour. That's why the second woe only lasts one hour. It's one hour long. And it's in that hour that the two witnesses ascend, according to Revelation 11. If time in Revelation is meant to be taken literally, and I believe the half hour of silence in heaven is a half hour long, the hour that Jesus comes to reap the earth at that third rapture. It's an hour that he's going to come. If all of those are meant to be taken literally, and I take them literally, then the 10 days of tribulation needs to also be taken as being a literal 10 days. It's not a symbolic 10 years. We, Revelation never indicates or uses a day to year conversion. It's always exactly what it says, 10 days. So there's going to be a 10-day, exactly 10-day period of tribulation, persecution for believers at the hands of the harlot, which is basically this present world system that you see right now. It's these people who are in control right now who are going to kill believers by the, by the millions, all the people who don't like believers right now. And this can include people who are, you know, awoke. It can include people who are atheists, transhumanists, Satanists, Luciferians, Muslim. They will all gang up on believers. And just like in the book of Esther, where Haman was having setting a day for the persecution and slaughter of the Jews, just one day, this pattern of setting a time to kill God's people is going to show up again, only it's not the Jews this time. It's believers. It's Christians. So the harlot is going to kill new and left behind believers. And some of the 144,000 of Israel are going to be killed as well. All right, so I'm going to give you a clue about why I think that all of a sudden there's going to be millions and millions of people who want to come to Christ and who are willing to die for the, the, the sake of believing that the book of Revelation is true, that the prophecy in the book of Revelation is true. They're willing to die for that. It's not just they're willing to die for Jesus because they believe in Jesus now. They're willing to die because of the testimony. And the testimony is the spirit of prophecy as revealed in the testimony that Jesus gave to the angel who gave to John, who gave to us, that came originally from the Father. This is a very unusual book. Revelation is an unusual book. It's said to come directly as a revelation from God the Father. It's not a revelation from the Holy Spirit uh, to believers. This is a revelation God gave to Jesus and said, I want you to give this to my people. And so Jesus gave it to an angel, basically, who gave it to John. Parts of the revelation were given from Jesus to John directly, but most of it was given to him by an angel who showed him these things and John said, look, I communicated, I testify that what I'm saying here is absolutely the truth. And I've done a video on this idea of the testimony and, people, and uh, Jesus and the angel and John all testifying that these things are true. And then in Revelation uh, chapter 1, it says, blessed are those who keep the words that are in the book for the time is near. The word keep is, the, is actually the word guard, that people who guard the testimony this particular testimony about the end times. Uh, that's the testimony that these people are willing to die for. There needs to be a reason why people are going to be willing to die for Christ, willing to be martyred, to give up their life for Christ during the end times. There's got to be a very, very, very good, solid reason for that. The reason why they're going to be willing to do that is because they're going to see prophecy fulfilled. What they're going to see is that certain uh, of the prophecies have taken place and are in the process of taking place. But the big evidence is going to be us. You and me. Those of us 
who are faithfully serving Christ, being led by the Holy Spirit in the school of hard knocks, being conformed into the image of Christ, you and I are going to be the linchpin for why these people will believe. And let me, let me show you why. There's going to be a war in Israel. That's the travail of the woman. That's the first prophecy that people are going to see, or it may be that Satan's stars that he casts from heaven are going to show up. All of a sudden, people are going to see really weird stuff. God is going to end that war. I think it's the Gog Magog invasion. The war will end. It will be short. Okay, short war, short. Israel has a history of short wars, you know, six day war. Okay, those are short. It's going to be a brief war. What happens when a woman comes to the end of her travail? Well, you have a baby. Okay, that's when the child is born, the male child. It's at the end of the travail, at the end of the war. And what does the birth of the male child look like? Then the male child is a combination of Christ and you and, and me. We're co-heirs, joint heirs with Christ. We're, the, we're one unit. The evidence that we are born is that we will go from mortal to immortal. We'll be changed. will be changed, changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. This is when we on earth will receive an immortal body. Okay, not a glorified body, an immortal body. Glorification will happen in heaven. That happens at a separate time. They will see us in immortal bodies. So what that means is if you had a amputation done, you're going to have your leg back. If you were blind, you're going to be able to see. You were sick, you're well. You have some kind of illness, illness is gone. You have some kind of defect, defect is gone. You are going to be an immortal, beautiful, whole, healthy person. That happens here before the rapture, okay? It isn't like all of a sudden, you know, in the rapture, this is the picture we've been given. We're going to be sucked up on into the clouds. Okay, and that's the third rapture. It's not the first one. We're going to be sucked up into the clouds and sort of on the way up, we're going to be glorified. And so when we arrive in heaven, we're all good. The symbolism of revelation implies that the birth of the child happens right here. This change from mortal to immortal and then we can't be raptured. We're not taken up until the eighth day. Okay. That's the day the child is caught up or the male child is caught up to God and to his throne. Okay. In between, there is Satan is going to try to persecute believers. Okay. There's a time uh, the child is born and say, the dragon wants to devour the child as soon as it's born. So there's something that happens right here to us that makes Satan want to devour us. And then it says, but her child was caught up to God and to his throne. So the pattern for a male child firstborn is that there are seven days. So the child is circumcised and named, brought into the, the full family community on the eighth day. That's when the rapture happens. That's the first rapture. That's when the elders appear in heaven as kings and priests. It's of the firstborn. Okay, so now let's say you've got seven days. That you're here in a totally healthy, whole body. Seven days you're here. And immortal bodies don't need to eat. They don't need to sleep. They don't go to work. <laughs> they, they don't do vacuuming. People who have been given an immortal body also have a commission now to go and do whatever they need to do during those seven days. And I, we're, we don't need to know ahead of time what that is. God will let us know. And I think we'll all have angels accompanying us. This is super common in scriptures that we, believers don't do these things by themselves. They have angels who 
assist them. So that um, in the Old Testament, when uh, one of the prophet's servants said, was all frightened that, you know, look at all the armies surrounding us. And the prophet said, well, you ought to see all the heavenly armies that are surrounding us. And so he prayed that the servant's eyes would be opened. And they were. And all of a sudden he could see this heavenly host that was surrounding them. That's the same thing. Okay. So we don't need to worry about you know, how are we going to know what to do or where to go or what to say or anything like that? We don't need to know it. And in fact, our very presence is a testimony that this stuff is true. Seven days of being an immortal person on the earth. This is a proof of resurrection. This is a proof that the things that Jesus said were true. This is a proof of prophecy. And it's undeniable. It's undeniable, and people will be willing to die for it. People will be willing to die for it. People will be willing to become believers because of it. The lukewarm will be willing to like get back on the bus again. This is, I believe, the biggest testimony for people who are going to be left. It's seeing us. There's going to be a lot of us who are changed from mortal to immortal and we've got seven days 24 7 that we can do and see and go and talk to people so what about people who get saved during this period of time well they they don't go in this rapture okay because they don't have an immortal body so they will have to stay okay they, they're going to stay through the rest of this period of time so i just want to expand this timeline a little bit Okay, so that's our eighth day, rapture. And I believe this is over the Feast of Tabernacles, and this is on the eighth day. So we're going to be talking to people. In addition, some of us, maybe not all of us, are going to be sealing the 144,000 in the Holy Spirit at that same time. There are three harvest festivals, and all harvest festivals are associated with the giving of the Holy Spirit. All of them. They all have other things associated with them as well. And every harvest has three parts. And the 144,000 are going to be sealed at this last harvest. And what's interesting is that the, the Feast of Tabernacles is the only harvest festival that's seven days long, with an eighth day at the end. They're going to be sealed. Other people are going to come to Christ. And on the eighth day, that's when the Joel 2 outpouring pour out my spirit on all flesh these people become christians that it's absolutely a time of joy i'm going to have you know this is going to be a huge time of joy people are going to be totally joyful the world is going to be at war okay that there's the war in israel will be short but there's going to be tons of bad things happening right here and financial collapses. All kinds of really bad things are, are coming at us. They have to be coming at us. We have to see that stuff coming because it's right here on the eighth day that seals one through four get opened. They're opened right away. There's no long leisurely thing. They just get opened right away and boom, we're into the really bad stuff, okay, right away. And actually, trumpets one through four are also um, blown that same day. Bad stuff just starts right away, right away. But the new believers are filled with joy. Why? Because they've seen us. All right, so there's, there's going to be about six months between the time when we are raptured, tabernacles and all of that, and the time of the abomination. This is all very compressed. See my timelines, the timeline template. So there's about six months between when we're raptured in this whole scenario right here and the abomination of desolation, which happens the same day as the sixth trumpet. And remember, that's when the harlots destroyed. And that's the day that the reign of the beast begins. Okay, remember the, the beast will reign for 42 months. 
Okay, before the harlot is destroyed, she has to persecute a bunch of people. So what that means is between the time that we're changed, made immortal, and taken into heaven, there's only going to be about five and a half, six months that the harlot can actually kill believers. And it's going to take place during 10 days. And I believe the 10 days is going to be just before the sixth trumpet. 10 days of persecution. 10 days of persecution of believers. This whole time is a time of joy that will then end in bitterness. And that's the, the little scroll. Put it in your mouth and eat it. It'll be sweet in your mouth and bitter in your stomach. It's going to end up in bitterness. Joyful and then to bitter. This is when that persecution is going to happen. It's going to happen over the Passover time. In the Passover right after believers are taken into heaven. The 144,000 will be here up until this point in time and they are going to receive an immortal body before they are taken into heaven and again it's the pattern of seven and then on the eighth day they'll be taken up so right here seven which means that during this three days right here some of them will die and that's why Jesus says to them you know Satan is going to throw some of you into prison and the letters to the seven churches are written to the 144,000 uh, candidates. And Satan is going to throw some of you into prison. Be faithful unto death, I'll give you the crown of life. In other words, they don't lose their crown just because they're not given an immortal body. But once they become immortal like like we did over here they'll have seven days where they walk with jesus on mount zion and then are taken into heaven uh, where there's a song that they sing that only they can sing i think the biggest witness for people who are left after we're gone is is us it's going to be us and the testimony that the those believers are going to bear is that the prophecy in the book of Revelation is true. Now there's going to be believers who are left during the reign of the beast and they also are going to testify that this book is true and that's part of the reason they're going to be beheaded. Uh, Revelation 12 17 and the dragon was enraged with the woman and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments in, of God and have the testimony of Jesus. Okay in Revelation the commandments of God are not the Ten Commandments. They're the commandments. Don't take the mark. Don't worship the beast. Don't worship the image of the beast. Don't take the number of his name. Those are the commandments of God in the book of Revelation as delivered by those uh, three angels. Worship God only. So those are the commandments. They're going to keep those commandments. And the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy that's given in this book. And, and the dragon is going to go make war on the rest of the woman's offspring. That is, these aren't firstborn offspring. They're the rest of the offspring. And we know that later on, some of these people will die for their faith. That's in Revelation 20, verse 4. Then I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was given to them. And I saw the souls of those who'd been beheaded because of their testimony of Jesus, and because of the word of God, and who had not worshipped the beast or its image, and had not received the mark on their foreheads or hands. And they came to life and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. And finally, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you about these things for the churches. I am the root and descendant of David, the bright morning star. I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. He who testifies to these things says, surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. So leave a comment in the comment section. We'll see you on another video. Until then, have a blessed day.